Okay, our next question or our next student is Joe Citato. So Joe, what Joe has given me, he's given us an equation. He asks about equilibrium, but then he also asks about endothermic and exothermic. And then there is a catalyst that is involved. Now, before we answer Joe's question, I'm going to answer Joe's question and I'm going to take you back to where does this question come from. Or let me rather take you back to where it comes from and then we'll answer Joe's question because I know a uh, good foundation is actually very important when we do great tough work. But then again, he also asks us some definitions that we've already done, but this is actually a b brilliant question. And I mean, the whole thing was out of 18 marks. It was really, really simple. So let's start. So we have hydrogen gas. We have hydrogen gas. Remember, hydrogen gas, um, just to elaborate a little bit further on this, when we do physics and when we do um, equations and stuff like that with chemical equilibrium, sometimes they're going to give it to you in words, like read it to you as a story like hydrogen gas reacted with iodine gas and so forth. Now, you need to remember back in grade 10 that hydrogen gas, iodine, fluorine, chlorine, and bromine, and all those gases are diatomic molecules. So don't make the mistake and just write a capital H. Right? Because then that's just hydrogen and not hydrogen gas. So make sure you have the two there to indicate that it's hydrogen gas. So we have hydrogen gas. They were very, very lenient in this paper because they've written it um, in brackets. They tell us it reacts. It reacts with sulfur powder. Sulfur powder. It's actually one of the most dangerous things that you might find. So please don't play with it. Sulfur powder. Now, according to, according to the following, to the following balanced equation, that following equation. Okay, they didn't say it's balanced. So we'll first have to see that is Joe's equation balanced. So I've got H2 and they've given me the phase. Remember when they give you phases, it can either be a homogeneous reaction or it can be a heterogeneous reaction. When things are not in the same phase, it will affect the value of Kc. When we talk about Kc, we do not include solids, we do not include liquids because they are not consistent. So I've got hydrogen gas, I've got sulfur, already I can see that is an S. Solids are not included. And then I've got H2S, which is then a gas. And then they're telling me that delta H, it's also called heat enthalpy, is less than zero. Remember what I told you? No, 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 smaller than. So this tells me that it's exothermic. Thermic. So it means that it was released. So I can actually add it here as a product, plus heat, just to spice things up. So the first question on Joe as um, question paper, it says define the term chemical equilibrium. Now already, Joe, we've already answered chemical equilibrium. Please know those definitions. And remember guys, do not put words that are not there. Don't say chemical equilibrium is like sometimes or something. No, the examiners want the correct mark. And what is nice about definitions and all that stuff is that sometimes they can count for three marks. So if you can get like 10 of them correctly out of a paper of 150, you're actually scoring a lot of points. So we've already answered that one. Now the next one is based on what we just explained. So the second one says, let me just write that as, as a two. It says, how will each, how will each of the following, how does each of the following changes? Now already you can think, we did changes now before we went to the ad break. We looked at what will happen if you increase more reactants or if you increase more products or if you decrease or take away your reactants or your product? What happens when you increase the temperature or reduce the temperature? What happens when you increase uh, volume or decrease the volume? Already when they're talking about changes, you need to look at the system. You also need to take to mind that it's an exothermic reaction, meaning that heat is exhaled or it's released as a byproduct. So which of the following changes affect, affect the number the number of moles of H2S gas. So now this is a nice one because they're asking us about the product that is formed. The first one, I'm just going to name this A, the addition, the addition, I forgot a T there, the addition of 
sulfur. Now, the number B says when an increase in, I mean, this is easy, an increase in temperature. So before the ad break, Rachel, before the ad break, we actually looked at this. So now let's look at it again. So now they've given us a reaction, which is this one. We've seen that it's balanced and so forth. We know that heat was uh, released and so forth. Now, how, how will each of the following changes affect the number of H? So our main concentration or our focus is on our products. If I was to add more sulfur, remember, if I can go back here, we talked about what would happen if you added more of this, or added more of this, how or in what way will the, equi e the, will the equilibrium shift? So now we're just doing that. So if I was to add more sulfur, so these are my products, these are my reactants. I'm trying to bake a cake, my ingredients. So I keep adding more and more and more and more ingredients. If you add more and more ingredients, what happens to the number of cupcakes that we can produce? They become more and more cupcakes. So firstly, depending on how the question will ask, because now here they just said um, what will happen. But they can either say you must write decrease, remains the same, or increase. But I'm also going to explain or on which direction the equilibrium will then shift. So if I, if I add more of this, the system will move in such a direction, the system will move in that direction as to produce, the system will want to produce more, more H2S. And what will happen to the H2S? The number of H2S, it will increase. It will increase. The more reactants you bring, the more ingredients you're bringing in, the more products you will form. Now, what will happen if we increase temperature? So I see temperature, remember what I said, you put it in as a product. If I increase my temperature, I'm putting in more and more and more heat. What is the system going to say? Oh my word, I've got so much temperature on this side. I need to give some to you. So it doesn't really give some, but it shifts in such a manner as to also give the other side a chance. So the system will shift into that direction as to consume the heat. So they consume the heat. So the heat will be produced or will be consumed on this side, right? And what then? Yeah, it will be consumed on this side. If we're adding more heat on the side, it will then be consumed on the other side. And that's technically how I would answer that question, um, Joe. Let me see if I have another question. So now what I said, this is Joe's question. But I want us to take it a little notch back because now he's bringing in a catalyst. The one question that he says, does a catalyst then affect KC? Now, I want us to take it back when we first did um, chemical systems in grade 12. So now, Joe, remember, we did endothermic and exothermic graphs. I'm going to start with the exothermic. I'm going to start with exothermic. Let me sum right reaction and stop being lazy. Exothermic reaction, this is an endothermic reaction. Therm endotherm endothermic reaction. So this is now not drawn to scale. I'm just going to show you the graph and then I'm going to show you where the information comes from and then remind you guys on what is then a catalyst. So let's just draw the, draw the graphs first. On this side for an exothermic reaction, it will look like this. And on this side, it'll look the other way, like this. Remember this, Joe? So remember, always, we always start with our reactants. I'm just going to write a capital R. And then you have your product. And then you have your EA and whatever and whatever on this side and so forth. And then we're going to do the same on this side, right? I'm going to have my reactants and then I'm going to have my products. This is technically how... Um, an exothermic and an endothermic graph will look. Let's now analyze it. In this instant, my reactants, this is the energy that they start off with, and then this is what the, the energy that my products are going to have. And that is why we've got delta H as less than zero, right? Because you always say products minus your reactants. The same way when we're doing um, vertical projectile motion or kinetic energy, we always say final minus initial. The same thing, when you have a business, you don't take how much you bought the stock and minus your profit, you do it the other way around. You take how much you have and then you can see if you're making profit or not. Let the business teachers not kill me. But you always take the energy level of your product, 
that's where you'll get your energy. Let's put an X there. And this is that of the reactants. Now you can see that the energy of the product is less than that of the reactants. That's why that is less than zero. And on this side, we have our products, the energy of my products, the energy of my reactants. And that is why on this side, we're going to have heat enthalpy greater than zero. And that is why this is an endothermic reaction. But now I want us to talk about a catalyst. Now remember, a catalyst is a substance that takes part in a reaction, but it does not get affected, right? It doesn't change the reaction in any way. It doesn't change the color. It doesn't change the taste or anything. However, it is able to speed up the reaction. And how does it do that? It lowers the activation energy. And remember, when we talk about activation energy or activated complex, is the highest point that the graph reaches, right? So let me just use another color here. If I was to add a catalyst on this side, remember, Joe, it would show like this, right? And on this side, it will go all the way up. It will go down like this. So this is, is an indication to us to show that a catalyst was then used. Now, I want to show Joe's graph, the graph that he has shown us now. So Joe gave us this graph, and he says, tops. So this one is reaction, the reaction rate in mol s, and this is my time in seconds. This is my time in seconds, and then I have something going like that. I've got a dotted line going in this direction. Right, now, um, it says a catalyst is added to the equilibrium. Now, based on this graph, they're not really showing where if a catalyst was added in any equilibrium because I only have one, re or one product, which is this one. So, Joe, I don't know if I have enough information for your question, but remember, if I, if I go back to this one, it can either look like this to show that there's a little hump and something was used up or something was made, but if you give me something like this, it just shows that this was being used up, something was being made, and remember, we don't even have a reaction or an equation here. But when we talk about Kc, a catalyst does not affect the rate of, KT, of Kc. Remember, when we're only talking about Kc, the only things that can change Kc is your temperature. Remember, when we increase temperature, it gives the, the particles more energy to collide and geometric orientation. When we increase the concentration, when we're adding more of that product, it, it enables the reaction to react a little bit more faster. And or pressure, remember when we increase the pressure by reducing the volumes, the gas molecules or particles are able to collide more better. So a catalyst, however, uh, uh, Joe, I hope I'm answering your question, a catalyst does not affect KC. Only those three will affect KC. So and if it comes to a question they ask you, KC, it will have no change, it will have no difference in the chemical system. And that is the question that Joe has given us.